Hello Internet, and welcome to the Science of Life. This is Alan Nyster, and today I will bring you a kitchen tip. I'm sure a few of you have seen the Food Network video about putting peanut butter on your bread without the risk of ripping the bread. This includes freezing the peanut butter. And that's that, in the freezer she goes. Ain't nobody got time for that! While it is scientifically sound, the question is what you do if you don't have all of the hardware required, or don't want to put in the level of effort. Today I will show you a faster way to spread the peanut butter on your bread without ripping and without the need of a rolling pin. The hardware you'll need is a plate, a butter knife, and a toaster. A cup as well if you want some milky goodness. The software you'll need is bread and peanut butter, of course, as well as anything else you might like to put on that bread. Step one is to put the bread in the toaster. Since this is a science channel, let me explain a little bit of the science going on in the process. This is an electric toaster, so there's no obvious heat source, at least uh, not to the pre-electric world. Sure, it's obvious that electricity is being turned into heat here, but how is that happening? In electrical conductors such as copper or iron, electricity passes through the material. Each material, though, has a different resistance to electrical flow. What this means is that the electrons move more quickly in low resistance metals such as iron and move more slowly in high resistance metals such as the nichrome in your toaster. The slower the electricity moves, the more likely that the electricity will start colliding with the electrons in the metal. The longer the electrons stay in the metal, the more frequently it will strike the electrons of the atoms. These collisions are what causes the electricity to produce heat. This comes from a concept called inelastic collisions. This means that the kinetic energy coming out of the collision is less than the kinetic energy going into the collision. Since energy can be neither created nor destroyed, the obvious question is, where does that energy go? It is transferred to the atoms in the metal in the form of thermal energy, what we all call heat. It changes from kinetic energy to thermal energy, but is never destroyed. So there is thermal energy released for each inelastic collision between the electrons. Each collision produces a minuscule amount of thermal energy, but there are so many collisions per square inch per second that th this small amount of heat per collision translates into high heat being released by the nichrome in the toaster. Now on to how that heat toasts the bread. As with all food processing, toasting bread comes down to chemistry. Because yes, toasting bread is processing, and so is cooking your meat. Not all processing is bad. Only some of it is. As far as the chemistry is concerned, what is going on with the bread is a series of chemical reactions which fall under the class of Maillard reaction. It is important to know that the full detailed chemical schematic of the Maillard reactions is not fully known or understood yet. Some of it is known though, like the fact that the general reaction is sugar, like glucose or sucrose or fructose, chemically reacting with an amino acid, such as aspartic acid, glutamine, or glutamic acid, to yield an aromatic compound. The chemical reaction which occurs in any given bread depends on the bread type. But for all bread, a chemical compound called hydroxymethylferferol, or HMF for short, is produced. This product gives the distinctive toasted bread smell and taste. Now, there are two ways toasting bread helps increase the spreadability of peanut butter. The first is the structural integrity of the bread. Notice that the bread is no longer soft and fragile. It is now crunchy and tolerates the spreading of peanut butter much more readily, which makes tearing much less likely. The second effect requires spreading within minutes after the bread is finished toasting. During this time frame, look what's happening with the globs of peanut butter. It's ever so slightly melting because the toast is still warm and that heat is being transferred to the peanut butter, which makes it softer and easier to spread on the bread. So spread away. And now the last step is to add everything else you want to add to the peanut butter bread. Present it as you wish, and chow down. That is how you make a peanut butter sandwich. You don't freeze the peanut butter, you toast the bread. You get nice gooey peanut butter, you have toasted bread on top of that, and you don't have to wait all night for the peanut butter to freeze. No extra hardware, you don't need to get out a rolling pin, you don't need to apply any heavy pressure to the peanut butter. Nice gooey peanut butter sandwich inside of 10 minutes. And most of that 10 minutes is just waiting on the toaster. And this is Alan Eister with the Science of Life, and I will see you next time. And until then, stay curious, my friends. 
So subscribe to stay informed. Don't forget to like, favorite, and share this video. Follow me on social media. Links in the description. And as always, until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep improving the world around you.